Hello, my name is Randy Davis, and this quick help video is about preparing files for Visio 2013 and 2016 to prevent crashes in Workplace Tech and Workplace Tech Editor. The goal of this video is to help you understand the different techniques used to prevent crashes by preparing the VSD files you're going to use in your Workplace Tech projects or import into your ASPs. To perform this work, you're going to need to have a licensed copy of Visio Standard or Professional 2013 or 2016, and making sure that it's updated to the latest versions and build available. If you're going to intend to build projects, you're going to need to have a uh, licensed copy of Workplace Tech 5.9.3, uh, which is the latest out, and uh, EcoStructure for Building Operations EBO 191 or 2.0 when it's released. Now let's talk about the processes to help prevent these crashes. Note that all of the steps that we're going to talk about here are done in Visio, not in Workplace Tech or in the Workplace Tech Editor. First uh, step that we're going to do is reduce the file size of the Visio drawing. I'm going to demonstrate each one of these things as we go along here. I have a file that we're going to be using through this demonstration that uh, is open in Visio 2013. I'll show you the file size reduction path. Click on File. Click on Reduce File Size. And we have some uh, check boxes. We want to select the first three. And we can click OK. And that will take care of that file size reduction. In Visio 2016, the process is very similar. Click on File. The only thing that's different is here we have to click on this box that says Check for Issues, and it gives you another drop down where we'll find the Reduce File Size option. I've already checked these and gone ahead and done the process on them, so you can see now they count on this one, that which at 40 before is now at zero. You'll also notice that the uh, file size, I didn't point this out before, it was at over 7 meg. Now we're at a little over 6 meg, so we've reduced the file size. The next process we're going to talk about is closing extraneous windows. We want to make sure that there aren't any additional Mega Master stencils open when we're trying to run these applications. To close these additional Mega Masters, we're going to go to View, Switch Windows, see that there's additional files open. We're going to close that stencil, View again, Switch Windows, close that stencil. Now if we look one last time, we're going to see that we just have the file that we're working on available to us. Removing rails or the guides that we find at the sides or the top and bottom of the page is the next process we're going to talk about. To remove the rails, we can click on each one of them while holding the control key down to select multiples at one time. Release the control key, right click, cut, oh, missed one over here, cut. Now you can see all the rails are gone. We want to make sure and save after each one of these steps also. Next we want to identify and remove any orphan shapes. Orphan shapes can be created from uh, previous crashes or from not saving files properly, and we want to make sure and remove those. Now I'm going to demonstrate how to get rid of an orphan shape. Zoom in on this one that's been taken off of the actual wire page. If we right-click on this and say Cut, it's going to come up with an error message telling us that we can't because of layer properties. 
If we right click on it again and go up here to show shape sheet, we'll be able to change an attribute or lock delete, which is currently set at one. Set that to zero and then come up here and accept that change. Close this. Now we'll be able to uh, cut that object and get rid of it. Now there is a, uh, a chance that uh, your machine isn't set up to allow you to show the shape sheet. If it is, you can come to File, Options, Advanced, scroll down to the bottom of the page here, and make sure that Run in Developer Mode is checked. If it's unchecked, when we right click on this, you'll see that there is no option for selecting the shape sheet. So we go back to Options, Advanced, Run in Developer Mode, OK. Now again, we'll have the option to show in shape sheet. In process step five, we're going to open the document stencil and delete all of the shapes. To get to the document stencil, we're going to have to open another tab. To open this tab, right click on File, customize the ribbon, and select Developer. Click OK. It's going to open another pull down menu where we can click on Developer and select Document Stencil. See, this one has a couple of, of uh, shapes in it. We'll right click, cut, OK. We'll click cut and say OK. And then we'll save. Next, let's remove any graphical objects that we don't need in the drawing. This file has a table. I'll zoom in on it a little bit here that they've added into here. It's a additional graphical piece. We uh, we can delete that or cut it. At this time we can also go ahead and close all of the shape stencils. Right click, close. This is just assuring that there aren't any additional stencils open that might cause any kind of instability in the drawing. This will get regenerated when you import the file into Workplace Tech Editor for EVO or if you run the hardware wizard once this is part of a project in Workplace Tech. It will redraw the rails and it will also open all of the stencil shapes required for Workplace Tech. last thing we're going to do is get rid of any additional background layers that may have been added to the drawing. We're going to click on the Developer tab again, close the Document Stencil, and open the Drawing Explorer. In the Drawing Explorer, you can expand the foreground pages, expand the device definitions, expand the layers, and see that we have a background in here. To be able to uh, delete this background layer, we have to right-click on Layers, go into Layer Properties, and unlock the background. Click OK. Now you can right-click on Background, Delete Layer. Now all of these additional layers that can cause instability in the graph or in the application are gone. Some of these processes may not be necessary on the drawings that you're dealing with. I hope this has been informative and helps you with some of the crashes you may be experiencing at Visio 2013 and 2016.